Uh, for the fellows, our uh, next speaker is Alex Kuru. Um, and he's speaking on measures of complexity of one eye groups and then balance. Thank you very much. for uh, organizing such an impressive and very nice conference and for allowing me the opportunity to speak and to wish Krishna a very happy uh, birthday and to talk a little bit about some joint work that we did many years ago. So I'd like to talk generally about the number some numbers that are associated with finite groups to try to measure how complex or the complexity of the finite group is. Uh, and I would like to start at the very beginning. This is the very beginning of the famous theorem, the classification of the finite simple groups. Uh, so it says that if you have a finite group A of prime order, and it's acting on a finite group G with the orders being G prime, relatively prime to each other, and the centralizer of the action of A in G is one, then G is still open. So you have this relationship between the fact that there's only one prime divided in the order of this and the fact that this group is uh, uncomplicated in the sense that it is no point. So I'd like to then, on the basis of that, uh, generalize what it means to be uh, uncomplicated for an acting group A, and to say that it means that the L of A is much small, and so L of A is the length of the longest chain of subgroups uh, of the finite group uh, A. And so, for example, if A is a solvable group, then the length of the longest chain is simply a number of primes dividing the order, uh, counting monoplicity. And if A is not solvable, then the number, the length of the monoplicity chain is less or equal to that, but it can also be smaller. Now, there's a, a different, so th this kind of looks at the one side of Thompson's uh, equation, the uh, Thompson setup, where A is cyclical prime order. The other side says it's no problem, so you can also generalize this and look at the fitting height of the finite group G and say that uh, the fitting height H is the smallest number such that you can split the group G into normal subgroups like this, where every step is no point. So this is kind of number of no point, how far it is from no point, how many no points you need to get the group G. So in 84, I um, proved the theorem that uh, says that if you have the situation of Thompson's theorem where A is a finite group uh, and it's acting a uh, fixed point freely on a finite group G uh, and they are relatively prime in order and unfortunately generically. Now generically means that I can almost prove this uh, if you have any any finite group G, as long as you can always find a, a finite set of primes that can give you trouble for the order of G. Um, and there are other theorems that kind of go beyond this. But anyway, to give you an idea of the type of theorem, uh, then the fitting height of G is bounded above by the length of the longest chain of subgroups uh, of A. And furthermore, this bound is the best possible. So 
whenever you have any finite root A, then you can find a G and just the equation. So this length of the longest chain is additive on a composition series. So you look at the composition factors of G, and the length is always additive. So I'd like to now uh, look at the set of all uh, non abelian finite simple groups. And I'll call this S simple to be a set of all these things and pick one up to isomorphism. Um, and so if you have that set and you look at the set of all elements in the set which are less than or equal to size, which order is less than or equal to n, then of course you get a finite uh, set. However, uh, in 2000, uh, we had a, a theorem that says with uh, Krishna, uh, Solomon, and myself, that says that the set of simple groups, finite non abelian simple groups, whose length of the longest chain is at uh, most 20, uh, is an infinite set. That this answered uh, the question as to whether was possible to find uh, such a thing. Of course, the key to such a theorem uh, is uh, the part of the theorem that is really, uh, due to Krishna that says that given any positive integer, uh, then there exists an infinite set of primes d and a positive integer n, such that the number of primes counting multiplicity of p to the n minus 1 is bounded by n. Capital N depending on the length? Yes. For any little n, there is a capital N. And so if you take uh, a little n uh, to be 2, you get basically you end up with this 20. Yeah, this depends upon work related to the n. Those n. So, even more precisely, what it says is that even a positive integer r, then you can look at a family of finite simple groups of Lie type and rank r, uh, n sub n, such that the length of the longest chain of subgroups in them is bounded by n, and the set is infinite. So even if you fix that they have to be of Lie type and they have to be of R, then you can always find it. And, and it follows basically from, from this theorem. Uh, uh, However, um, I'd like to talk also about a different uh, type of measure of complexity uh, to describe some work that is more recent. And that is Jordan's theorem. So another way that you can look at uh, how uh, complicated a group is, is to say that you have a finite group is not too complicated because it has an abelian subgroup A whose index is bounded. So you have to make basically uh, most of the group so the theorem of Jordan says that there is a function uh, such that whenever G is a finite subgroup of G L and C, then G has an abelian subgroup of bounded index by some function. And so this has been, this is a very old theorem, so it has been studied uh, using the classification, and in particular, we know what the best bound for such a function is. Uh, and it is uh, that for every n, if you have a subgroup, finite subgroup of GLN, C, th then G has an abelian normal subgroup of index at most uh, f of n, where the best function f of n is known completely, exactly, and in particular for n at least 71, it's just n plus 1 factorial. So you know exactly using the classification of finite symbol. 
uh, it's easy to see why it cannot be uh, any smaller than that because uh, Sn plus 1 is contained there and of course that's no normal at the end of the uh, So uh, we have that. So this theorem uh, of Jordan uh, has some generalizations or applications to other situations, for example, finite subgroups of GL and F, where F is a field in characteristic P, were studied in, by Brower and Feit, or uh, in a different way, the same kind of groups were studied by Michael Collins, or the finite subgroups of connected uh, complex uh, Lie groups. Uh, and not only do we have theorems, we also have conjectures. So for example, there is Sayre's conjecture that says that if you have F a field and N a positive integer, then the same thing happens with the finite subgroups of the Cremona group. So the Cremona group, uh, if you take a subgroup, finite subgroup of order prime to the characteristic of the field, and Sayre conjectures that the conclusion of, of uh, Jordan's theorem is also true. Now in a different kind of um, uh, setup, there is uh, Jesus conjecture that says that if you have a compact connected differential variety, then uh, there exists a constant depending on the variety k uh, x such that every finite group, G, which acts uh, differentially and effectively on X, has an abelian subgroup such that the um, index is finite. So the conclusion will also be true when you fix a, a, a compact connected differential so variety. This is a conjecture. Um, there was some partial results by uh, Ignatius Mendet and Bruno Zimmerman, uh, in some cases showing that uh, Jesus' conjecture was true. Um, and more recently, there has been a, an example of a, an exa of a compact connected differential variety where it's not true. Um, but the question remains, when it is true, how can you actually prove that it is true? And I'd like to uh, discuss a little uh, reduction theorem that allows you to prove that it is true when it is true. So the setup is going to be uh, that C is a set of finite groups close undertaking subgroups. So the subgroups of all these things have the property that it's all finite subgroups of a certain automorphism group of something. So it's always a set of subgroups closed under taking subgroups. So we're going to remove the object and just a set of, uh, of finite subgroups closed under taking subgroups. And then we say that it has the Jordan property uh, J of uh, C and D if for every element in the collection uh, there is an abelian subgroup of G whose index is bounded by C, and A can be generated by a set with D elements of U. So I'm putting not just the C, but also the number of generators. It is very easy to show in the case of the original Jordan uh, case that the number of generators is bounded above by the dimension of the, of the vector space. Uh, and in, in the other applications, it's similarly easy to show that if you have an abelian, finite abelian subgroup, the number of generators will be bounded by some function of the, of, of the dimension. So we put the C and then the D. And then, Within the C, I'm going to look at only a small subset of the collection to try to analyze whether or not it will satisfy the uh, conclusion of uh, Jordan's theorem. 
So this is the collection T for two primes, I guess. T of C is the set of all elements in C that can be written in this way. So you have T in C. Uh, it is written as a product of two groups, P and Q. They are zero subgroups of T, and one of them is normal. So it's a semi-direct product of two Siegel subgroups, a very uh, simple kind of case. And so in particular, you get that this is always a PQ group where you have two primes. But I'm not specifying the two primes. I'm looking at all possible sets of two primes. Uh, and in particular, uh, T is solvable. Uh, it's clearly solvable since this is not important, or because of the famous theorem. And so the theorem I uh, want to talk about is this theorem of Mundet and myself that says that if you have such a collection of subgroups, so a collection of subgroups closed under uh, taking subsets, and it has the, the property that whenever you have, you look at just those uh, that are of the shape that I talked about before, so those in T of C, and these have the Jordan property, so we have the Jordan property for just for those, then you can find a C that will depend on M of D, a C such that uh, with the same B, uh, you will get the Jordan property for the whole thing. So it reduces the problem of finding the whether or not you have the Jordan property to just those which are of the shape that I talked about before. Um, now naturally, <laughs> the proof uses the classification uh, and you um, have to make sure that you check uh, all these things. Uh, I'd like to, to mention uh, some consequences uh, of this. Uh, the first is that uh, if you have varieties with cohomology without torsion, and which are supported on even degree, only on even degrees, or in, in particular spheres, the dimension, uh, the conjecture uh, holds. So using that, uh, it follows that this is true. And also, uh, also a consequence uh, by my co-author that the conjecture is true for these uh, varieties. Uh, of course, some of them are not compact, but the question is, some of them will satisfy the Conclusion of Jordan's theorem and others well, So here, uh, if you have a um, one of these uh, compact varieties, um, then the conclusion of Jordan's theorem holds. And then finally, uh, if you have Euclidean spaces of dimension of four six, also using uh, the theorem that talked about uh, also uh, holds. And uh, I am early by a few seconds. Mm -hmm. so. Any questions? Are there any questions? So in that earlier work with Krishna, which I haven't seen, if you restrict to solvable subgroups of GL and F, is the problem sort of trivial? You, you, were, you get something better, I guess is what I should say. Is it trivial to get something better the earlier? Well, uh, it, it doesn't really. Doesn't matter, matter. It doesn't really make sense because you have to. You know, you're saying that the bound could be improved considerably. We're saying that the number of simple groups is. So, you know, let, let me put it back. Uh, with Krishna, we were looking at only simple groups. So, if you don't have simple groups.
So we have the number of simple groups whose length is bounded by point name. So I suppose for the one. Okay. Think about it. This conference will replace it by much smaller than 19, but not I. So this depends on the number here? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> you count from AP and you get the bound. This bound implies this. I think the bound here is 21 or something. This is 20. But it's not clear that this 21 is the best bound. So if you are willing to spend more effort or learn more number theory, you probably can get it. All right. Uh, there are no questions, but thank you. The next talk in here starts at 2.45.